in the last video, what we were looking at was the work energy theorem, which says that the amount of work done is going to equal a change in kinetic energy. What we're going to look at in this video is a couple interesting forces uh, and a new topic called power. So, let's think about the work done by a force. Well, we know that from our inspection of, of Hooke's law before that given some spring at relaxed state, when we compress the spring or extend it, so imagine if we take the spring and condense it so that now it is like that, the spring uh, wants to push back with a restoring force. Well, we know that uh, it's a linear relationship between uh, the force, the restoring force, and the uh, x value, which is its uh, the distance from its equilibrium point. And we could imagine having force in our x position as so. Well, if we want to think about the work done by the spring force over some interval, let's say from A to B, same as uh, the, the work we were doing in the other the other day, uh, looking at variable force, what we could do is think about drawing down a little bit of a sliver with width dx, and here's my force. And so that little bit of work is f dx. All right, well, what is our force? Well, our force is negative kx. So to find out the amount of work done, we could integrate negative kx dx from x initial to x final and that's going to give us the work done by a spring. So integrating that, uh, it's a simple power integration. We get negative kx squared over 2 evaluated from our initial position to our final position and that'll give us work done by a spring. Well, let's see how this um, ties into our work <laughs> when we are dealing. So imagine you've got some block sliding into a spring and let's imagine that this block has some mass m and it has some velocity v and it's going to go into the spring and we want to know the max compression of the spring. Well the max compression the max compression is going to occur when the velocity equals zero. So the change in kinetic energy of my of the block is going to be one half mv final, which is zero, minus one half mv initial. So simplifying that, that's just negative one half mv not squared. And where does that work come from? Well, that work or sorry, that, that change in kinetic energy, it comes from work, which is the work done by the spring, which is negative one-half kx squared. So what this allows us to find is the x position of the spring. So in other words, how much we compressed it. So if we do a little bit of simplifying, we get that x equals, well, m v naught squared over k square rooted. And this will find our maximum x compression of the spring because what occurs, what happens is that the block loses all of its kinetic energy and it loses all of its kinetic energy because of the work done by the spring. The last topic is power. Uh, power is the amount of work per time. So if we think about that, we're talking about the change in work or the work over a change in time. Well, that's the average power. But if we're talking about instantaneous power, that's 
dW dt. And how do we measure power? We have two different measurements. One is the joule per second, which we call a watt. And this is the, the standard measurement, one watt. Uh, and then the other one is a horsepower. And horsepower is foot-pounds per second. So we have two different measurements for, for power, but remember power is what we're looking at is the amount of work needed for some amount of time. Just to look a little bit more about power is, so if we, if we call power as dW dt, we know that, um, well we know that work is F cos theta x. So P is dW dt, where W is, so we're looking at d F cos theta x dt. And as long as we're talking about a constant F, uh, what this equals is f cos theta dx dt. And we know that dx dt is just velocity. Well, what is f cos theta v? Well, that's just simply f dot v. And so here's our last equation, a dot product that looks at power as the dot of uh, the force with velocity.